So, let us continue from where we left yesterday. What we found yesterday was that the integral number system was not sufficient enough to explain all the problems in the real world. What we found out was that this integral number system was not closed for division. That is, the question of two integral number was not an integer. In order to express the, in, uh, the division of two integers, what we led, what it led to was the invention of real number system. But eventually what we found out that this real number system was not even completely closed. It was not closed for finding the square roots of two number. And for example, in, in real number system, there existed no number which was square root of x squared equals to minus 1. This led to the evolution of complex numbers. Then we said that any number of the form z, that any number z of the form x plus iota y was a complex number. This just define the set of complex number. In order to define a complete system, we even define some of the operations or we, I can say we define the structure of this complex number z equals to x plus 5. And on the basis of this structure, what we found out was that any complex number z can be even represented on a 2D plane. We call that 2D plane as an argon plane and we said that the representation of a complex number on this 2D plane would be called as argon diagram. So now, let us discuss this argon diagram into more detail. So, up till now we can say that a, cart a complex number can be represented in two ways. One, in the Cartesian way where the complex number would be written as z equals to x plus iota y and the other representation would be in polar coordinates where a complex number would be represented as r comma theta. And once again, I would like to mention that this r has to be always positive because this r is nothing but the displacement of the complex number from the origin. So let us see, let us once again draw our argon plane and represent, represent the complex number. So I say, this is my real, uh, this is my x axis which is also called as real axis because it represents the real coefficient of z and this is my imaginary axis because it represents the imaginary coefficient of z. Now, any complex number z of the form r comma theta can be represented here where this vector oz which is equals to r or which is equals to mod z is the displacement of the complex number of the complex number z from the origin and this theta is said to be the argument of z which is even represented by arg of z. Now, I can say this angle theta does not possess a unique value. It can possess multiple values in the form of 2 and pi plus theta. For example, if this case, if this theta is pi by 4, then this, uh, then this, if uh, for example, if I say that if this theta is for, uh, 45 degrees or pi by 4, then it can possess multiple values in the form of 360 plus 45, 720 plus 45 and so on. So, let us try to define a rule in which we can find some standard value of this theta, which we can represent here in the polar coordinates. So, I say any value, uh, uh, this value of theta could be anything. For example, we can define it to be in between 0 to 2 pi or minus pi to pi. So, let us for our convenience say that any value of theta that will lie between minus pi to plus pi, we will call it as the principal argument of theta. I am repeating again, any value of theta that lies between minus pi to plus pi, we will call it as the principal argument of z. Now, I say that the value uh, that this principal argument, the value of this principal argument will always depend upon the coordinate in which the complex number lies. For example, if I say my complex number lies in the first quadrant here and my complex number z 
where my complex number z makes an angle theta with the x axis when in this case I did not uh, let us say I did not the principal argument by theta and alpha is the angle which the uh, which the complex number makes with the x axis ok. So, if my complex number lies in the first quadrant then I can very safely say that this angle theta is going to be equal to alpha. So, I can say if my uh, if complex number lies in the first quadrant then my principal argument is going to be equals to alpha. Now, if my complex number lies in the second quadrant and my complex number z makes an angle theta with the, makes an angle alpha with the x axis in this case the principal argument theta would be something of the form pi minus alpha once again what I am telling here is alpha is, is the angle which my complex number z makes with the x axis is or uh, more specifically if alpha is the acute angle which my complex number makes with the x axis because in this case my z uh, my complex number z is making two angles with the x axis one with the positive side of x axis and one with the negative side of x axis that is why I am specifying more clearly if alpha is the acute angle I am even write here what is alpha alpha is the acute angle with x axis ok. So, in that, that case my principal argument would be equal to pi minus alpha similarly we can solve this this uh, same way similarly we can solve for third and fourth quadrant also. So, if my if I say my complex number lies in the third quadrant then in this case the acute uh, acute angle would be this which would be equal to alpha. So, my principal argument theta would be nothing but my mi minus pi would be pi mi minus of pi minus alpha. I hope this makes sense to you all and if my complex number lies in the fourth quadrant then the acute angle alpha would be this. And in this case, my principal argument would be equals to minus alpha. So, let us summarize this complete thing once again. What we started was, we started with a 2D representation of a complex number, where we said that a complex number in polar coordinate is represented as r comma theta, where r is nothing but the displacement of the complex number from the origin and theta is the angle which it makes with the x axis. Now, this theta could have multiple values in the form of 2 and pi plus theta. So, I just wanted to define a standard value of theta. So, I said, so we said that any value of theta that lies between minus pi to plus pi is said to be the principal argument of theta. Now, we just wanted to define, uh, we just wanted to define an easy way in which we could derive this value of theta. So, we said, so we just defined one more angle alpha that for that and alpha we defined uh, alpha. We said alpha is nothing but the acute angle which the complex number z makes to the x axis. So, whenever a complex number z lies in the first quadrant, we found out that the principal argument theta was equals to alpha. When it was lying in the second quadrant, we found out that theta was equals to pi minus alpha. Similarly, we found it for third quadrant and fourth quadrant. Now, let us start discovering some very interesting result related to the polar representation of complex number. So, we have already discovered that we can represent co uh, complex number in a 2D uh, in the 2D plane and where the polar um, and we say we can represent any complex number in polar coordinates in this in, in the form of ordered pair r comma theta. Now, suppose I have two complex numbers 
of the form r1 theta1 and r2 theta2. We have already seen how we can add, subtract, multiply or divide two complex numbers in, R, in, in Cartesian form. Similarly, let us try to multiply two complex numbers in polar form even. So, here R1 theta1 can be written as R1 cos theta1 plus R1 sin theta1 and R2 theta2 could be written as R2 cos theta2 plus R2 sin theta2. When I multiply this both, I get R1 R2 as common factor. So, um, this is going to be iota here and iota here. I forgot mentioning the imaginary part here. So, when I multiply this, what I get is cos theta1 cos theta2. minus sin theta 1 sin theta 2 plus iota sin theta 1 cos theta 2 plus cos theta 1 sin theta 2. If you refresh your map memories and uh, see these two terms this is nothing but equal to cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 and this is geometrically equal to nothing but sin theta 1 plus theta 2. So, I can safely write this as r1 r theta r2 into cos theta 1 plus theta 2 plus iota sin theta 1 plus theta 2. Now, something very interesting here this what does this number represent in polar coordinates this complex number represents a complex number whose argument uh, sorry whose modulus is nothing but r1 r2 and whose argument is theta1 plus theta2 so in in terms of in terms of polar coordinates i can write this as a complex number which could be represented by order pair r1 r2 comma theta 1 plus theta 2. I am repeating once again we multiplied r1 theta r1 cos theta 1 plus iota sin theta 1 and r2 cos theta 2 plus iota r2 sin theta 2. What we found out thus that we got that the multiplication led to this term r1 r2 into cos theta 1 plus theta 2 and iota sin theta 1 plus theta 2. This is what is this? This is equal to a complex number whose modulus is r1 r2 and whose argument is theta 1 plus theta 2. Here we define a very interesting result that is when we multiply two complex numbers r1 r2 and r2 r2 r2, r2 theta 2 the resultant complex number can be derived can, would be of the form r1 r2 is the theta 1 plus theta 2 but this what we are doing is we are multiplying the modulus of the two complex number and we are adding the argument of the two complex number if i want to represent this geometrically what i'll get is something of this form if this is one complex number z1 with its modulus r1 and argument theta1 and I have another complex number z2 with modulus r2 and argument theta2. So, the resultant of their multiplication would be a complex number z with modulus r1 r2 and argument theta1 plus theta2. So, I am writing this uh, once again, I am writing the result here, says that multiplication of r1 theta 1 into r2 theta 2 gives me what? r1 r2 comma theta 1 plus theta 2. Now,
Now, this little result is very interesting and using this we can prove how multiplication of two re negative, real negative real number leads to a positive real number. Let us try understanding this. If I say Z1 is one complex number, Z1 is one complex number which is also a real number and Z2 is another complex number which is also a real number and more specifically both Z1 and Z2 are negative real numbers. So when I try to represent Z1 in polar coordinates, I want R1 to be positive. So Z1, first of all, since Z1 is a real complex number, it would be represented along X axis or the real axis. Now I want R1 to be positive. This implies Z would be measured along the negative direction of X axis. Thus, its argument would be 180 degrees. Similarly, Z2 is even a complex number, so it would be represented along x axis and for R2 to be positive, even Z2 would be represented along the negative direction of x axis, thus even theta2 is going to be 180 degrees. Now from this, what I have is multiplication of R1 and R2 can be derived by first of all multiplying the multiplying their amplitude so what i get here is r1 into r2 that is the multiplication of two complex the real parts of z1 and z2 because z1 and z2 are just real and theta1 plus theta2 would be 180 degrees plus 180 degrees that is 360 degrees so what i'm driving to is when I am multiplying two complex numbers with argument 180 degree and 180 degree, what we, we have landed onto the real on the positive direction of x axis because the argument turns out to be theta 1, uh, theta 2 that is 360 degrees. Hence, we can say that the multiplication of two negative real numbers whose, amplitude, uh, whose argument is going to be 180 degrees results into a complex number whose amplitude would be r1 into r2 and its argument would be 360 degrees that is on the positive direction of x axis. Now, we started with the multiplication of two imaginary numbers but we have proved a real result. So, that is I wanted to convey that although we are starting complex numbers but these are not just imaginary numbers, they have real world implications and this is not just the only one example we can prove. When we proceed further in this chapter, we will see we can prove lots of real world application on, in this form. The way, we, yes, the way yesterday we started while solving this equation that is y double prime of y equals to 0, we found that not just this equation have imaginary roots, it even has real world significance in the form of minus of acceleration was equal to displacement which was nothing but the equation of simple harmonic motion. Now, let us try to generalize the result which we have got. Here. Now, from this result what I can say, what I understand is when I want to multiply two complex number R1, R theta 1 and R2, theta 2, I can derive the result by multiplying their magnitudes and adding their arguments. Similarly, by the concept of mathematical induction, so by induction, I can easily say that if I want to multiply n factors of the form R1 theta 1 into R2 theta 2 up to r in theta n, the result would be multiplication of their magnitudes, so which would be r1 into r2 up to r in comma addition of their arguments that is theta 1 plus theta 2 up to theta n.
a very special special case of this equation will be when when all these factors are equal so we can say that multiplication of r comma theta into r comma theta till r comma theta is equals to r to the power n that is multiplication of all the amplitudes and addition of the arguments which is equals to r to the power n comma n theta a more special case of this equation would be when r is equals to 1 so i am taking a special case of this special case when r would be equal to 1 so i say 1 comma theta to the power n would be equal to 1 to the power n comma n theta which is equals to 1 comma n theta when i try to represent this geomet this thing geometrically see what i am having is a complex number whose amplitude is 1 whose amplitude is 1 uh, whose modulus is 1 and whose amplitude or argument is theta so it could be represented as a complex number whose distance from the origin is 1 and whose argument is theta when I want to represent this in terms of typical x y coordinate I can say the x would part would be equal to cos theta and the y coordinate would be equal to sin theta so when I write this in terms of Cartesian coordinates what I will have here uh, in terms of uh, Cartesian coordinates I can write this as cos theta plus iota sin theta to the power n would be equal to cos n theta plus iota sin n theta this result drives to a very important equation for polar coordinates that is Demov's law.